and uh, scientifically in Estonia. But I do pay taxes in both places. And I also have to disclose that I never performed a study on phosphate yet. Um, so I will just present a view of a practical intensivist. Uh, and to start, uh, we need to clear, uh, <coughs> uh, clarify the definitions. Phosphorus is an element and phosphate is an anion. And it's a part of uh, phosphoric acid. And it, it is uh, mainly monovalent or divalent um, <coughs> phosphate anion, which we find in the blood. Confusingly enough, we call it inorganic phosphorus. Strange. Rationale seems to be to distinguish, distinguish um, this inorganic phosphorus from the phosphates within uh, organic molecules like adenosine triphosphate and phospholipids, etc. Normal concentration, you probably um, know, can measure it in millimole per liter or in milligram per deciliter. Um, <clears throat> also in plasma, we can find uh, some diffusible phosphate complexes with calcium and magnesium and uh, some non-diffusible phosphate uh, protein bound. Phosphate is mainly an intracellular anion. Um, only 1% of uh, it is present in, in the blood. And it is involved in virtually every cellular process. Metabolism, synthesis, signaling, buffering, um, etc. In the serum, however, the role of phosphate is actually limited. And if, you, if we look, the um, extracellular phosphate pool is around um, half a gram, um, whereas twice as much is absorbed uh, daily from the intestines. And seven grams per day is filtered by the kidneys and most of it is reabsorbed by the kidney. So kidney is the main regulator of phosphate. Uh, phosphate is filtered by the nephron and mostly reabsorbed in the proximal tubule uh, in a co-transport with sodium. And uh, this um, reabsorption is uh, regulated mainly by phosphorus intake, so serum, serum phosphate and uh, parathyroid hormone. And kidneys, very successful in um, <clears throat> managing uh, phosphate. So if we have hypophosphatemia with phosphate excretion more than 5%, then we call it already renal phosphate wa wasting. So nearly everything can be re reabsorbed if it's uh, needed. There are some foods uh, that are high in uh, phosphate. You have them here on the picture. Um, body adapts um, <clears throat> quite um, well to uh, changes in uh, dietary phosphate. And there are um, actually two pathways. One is uh, with the serum calcium and um, parathyroid uh, hormone pathway. And the other one is um, uh, vitamin D metabolite uh, synthesis, which regulates. So with high phosphate diet, we're, the body is regulating it, and the opposite way, in the low phosphate diet, the reabsorption uh, is increased and also intestinal absorption is increased. However, uh, these two pathways to regulate the um, <coughs> phosphate level um, are uh, somewhat different. Whereas uh, parasteroid uh, hormone regulates calcium and phosphate in different directions, then this uh, vitamin D metabolite regulates it in the same direction, both reabsorption and, uh, and absorption in the GI tract. So this pathway here may actually lead to hyperphosphatemia with correction of hypocalcemia. Moreover, vitamin D metabolite synthesis, so this pathway is stimulated by the parasteroid hormone itself. There are some other factors uh, often occurring in our <coughs> ICU patients that increase uh, or decrease phosphate excretion. So phosphate will be more excreted with the volume expansion, acidosis, uh, giving of glycocorticoids and diuretics. And uh, whereas, for example, insulin alkalosis um, are uh, decreasing phosphate excretion. Hypophosphatemia is uh, quite prevalent in <coughs> intensive care 
patients, um, most of the patients with hepatic surgery, uh, with burns, and also with sepsis, um, are hypophosphatemic. There are several mechanisms uh, for hypophosphatemia. First, uh, of course, inadequate intake, uh, decreased uh, in intestinal absorption with malnutrition, but we can also decrease the intestinal absorption with uh, um, substrates uh, that uh, increase intestinal binding of phosphate. Excessive loss uh, via uh, diuretics or hemodialysis or uh, other um, um, other um, reasons to um, increase uh, renal excretion of uh, phosphate. But also very uh, important mechanism is redistribution into cells, which can occur with uh, several uh, drugs we give to our patients, uh, with recovery from diabetic ketoacidosis, with respiratory alkalosis or sodium bicarbonate, bicarbonate uh, administration, uh, but also with refeeding syndrome, which I come back uh, a bit later. Clinical manifestations of hypophosphatemia um, are non-specific. Um, it uh, can include respiratory uh, muscle uh, dysfunction, and uh, the patients could be difficult to wean. Um, cardiovascular complications uh, like decreased myocardial contractility or increased requirements of uh, inotropics. And, and this uh, catecholamine insensitivity, insensitivity has been shown to be rever reversible uh, when uh, normalizing phosphate. And also, uh, arrhythmias have been described with um, hypophosphatemia. And also well-known all uh, neuromuscular uh, problems and some hematologic and uh, metabolic um, matters. Um, it has been shown in some studies that uh, hypophosphatemia is associated with ador adverse outcome. However, it has not been shown being an independent predictor of mortality in a very recent study. Um, and actually, it is not clear whether hypophosphatemia increases mortality or is rather a marker for severity of illness. And we, uh, either we don't know uh, whether correction of hypophosphatemia uh, could reduce uh, mortality. And the question is probably here uh, that um, we don't know how well the serum phosphate reflects uh, the intracellular level. Actually, serum phosphate tells a little about the intracellular phosphate level and, and whether total body phosphate depletion exists. Uh, and also, that, that makes it difficult to predict how much phosphate should we give to the patient uh, with a certain uh, degree of uh, hypophosphatemia. And probably um, severe phosphate depletion needs some time to develop. We can um, treat or replace phosphate orally. And, uh, but we need to know that uh, active vitamin D is required for um, absorption. And uh, in higher doses, actually already above 30 millimole per day, it has been uh, described that um, diarrhea uh, might occur with phosphate replacement. Uh, intravenously, uh, large doses uh, might lead to hyperphosphatemia, hypomagnesemia, hypocalcemia, and hypotension. And Therefore, it is actually widely recommended to replace only in symptomatic uh, hypophosphatemia um, or if the hypophosphatemia is severe, so be below uh, 0.3 millimole per liter. In uh, diabetic ketoacidosis, routine replacement uh, has been shown no advantage and uh, more uh, incidence of uh, hypocalcemia. And also there, it is indicated uh, to replace when phosphate is uh, severely decreased or if it's moderate hypophosphatemia with cardiac or respiratory dysfunction or anemia. If we exercise a bit and, and need a bit of uh, phosphate afterwards, then it is enough if we just drink the glass of milk. But um, there are oral preparations 
um, that we can use for moderate or mild um, <coughs> hypophosphatemia. And also enteral feeds uh, include uh, phosphate, so it is actually good to know how much your enteral nutrition uh, preparation includes phosphate. And then there are different intravenous uh, <coughs> preparations. Uh, there are sodium and uh, potassium um, preparations uh, that you can use. And it, uh, in general, it has been considered safe to administer up to 45 millimoles per day with infusion rate up to 20 millimoles per hour. But there are different opinions in this. And we need to uh, be aware of uh, hyperphosphatemia leading to hypocalcemia and, and uh, uh, crystal deposition in the dish tissues. Probably hyperphosphatemia is uh, overtreated in critical ill because uh, we, we know that it leads to failure to, to wean and, and uh, muscle um, dysfunction, etc. So we, we um, try always to correct it. Refeeding syndrome, uh, just one slide about it. Uh, probably you all know that uh, malnourished patients with, uh, fed suddenly with high carbohydrate load, um, then the, there occurs a redistribution from the, um, from the serum into the cells because uh, before this, for example, serum phosphate is maintained uh, from uh, because taking the phosphate out of intracellular space. So intracellular space is low phosphate even if the serum phosphate might be almost normal. And now if we suddenly <coughs> give glucose, then uh, we um, stimulate insulin uh, release and there will be a rapid uptake of glucose, kalium, magnesium and phosphate and it can uh, lead to uh, several dramatic uh, consequences. Most effective way to treat tree feeding is just to be aware of it and start feeding slowly and measure and supplement all these electrolytes. Uh, mechanisms of hyperphosphatemia are increased intake, decreased loss, uh, mainly in renal failure or increased uh, production uh, with uh, cell destruction. And also, there might be a pseudo-hyperphosphatemia in patients with paraproteinemia. Consequences of hyperphosphatemia are not so bad as with, uh, for example, hyperkalemia or hypermagnesemia. Uh, the major effect of it is to cause hypocalcemia. And uh, therefore, tetany uh, might occur, and again, calcium can be deposited in the tissues. Uh, treatment normally not needed and hemodialysis in case of uh, renal failure is of course effective to lower the, the phosphate, but we do it not because of phosphate normally. Uh, we need to remember also that there is a chronic hypophosphatemia existing as a rare hereditary condition and there are some laboratory pitfalls. For example, hemodialysis can uh, cause up to 30% increase in uh, serum phosphate and uh, some other factors may interfere with the result that you get from the lab. Um, we can actually assess uh, tubular reabsorption of phosphate uh, by measuring serum and urine phosphate. However, normally urine needs to be collected for 24 hours then. Um, it has been also studied whether um, phosphate might uh, be kind of marker of the severity of kidney injury and has been shown that it is associated with um, risk of death in, in uh, chronic uh, kidney disease uh, in uh, pre-dialysis uh, phase. And uh, as a marker of acute kidney injury, there is actually not much data. It has been suggested uh, in one uh, smaller study after living donor liver transplantation. Take home messages would be that uh, you should check phosphate level, think about possible mechanisms of the disorder, whether a total phosphate depletion is probable and correct severe and symptomatic hypophosphatemia and in ICU patients probably also moderate uh, hypophosphatemia makes sense to correct. 
uh, and be aware of possible fast changes in refeeding syndrome and correction of ketoacidosis and some complications with correction of hypophosphatemia. So there is always a simple answer just to correct, but it might be not the best one. Thank you very much.